Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening, welcome to Saad Asia Newsline. I'm Lepakshi Khurana. Here are the top stories we're tracking for you on Monday, the 11th of July. Monsoon rains wreck havoc in India and Pakistan, thousands affected. Sri Lankan protesters throng President's house await for leaders' resignations. And no loan from IMF despite Pakistan dancing to its tune, says Interior Minister. And now for all the details. Heavy rainfall continued to lash parts of India and Pakistan on Monday, leading to floods in several areas, which affected thousands of people. Extreme weather in South Asia has become more frequent in recent years, and environmentalists warn that climate change could lead to even more serious disasters. Incessant rains in the last 24 hours flooded many low-lying areas in India's western Gujarat and Maharashtra states on Monday, affecting normal life in the region. Several houses were inundated by floodwaters in Valsad district of Gujarat, where NDRF, National Disaster Response Force personnel, were deployed to rescue stranded people. The India Meteorological Department has predicted heavy to very heavy rainfall to continue during the next five days in the region. Daily commuters in Gujarat's Ahmedabad city waded through waterlogged roads as they tried to reach their destinations, while residents struggled to drain rainwater from their homes. Extreme weather in South Asia has become more frequent in recent years and environmentalists warn that climate change could lead to even more serious disasters. हम जहां से आ रहे हैं वहां से पूरे रोड पे पानी भरा हुआ है हम अभी दिक्कत इतना हो रहा है कि हम हमारे जॉब पे जा नहीं सकते पूरा हमारा व्हीकल जो है वो भी बंद हो गया है उसमें भी पानी घुस गया है आने जाने की बहुत दिक्कत हो रही है सब हमारे से पीछे पूरे व्हीकल कार से लेके बाइक से लेके सब बंद पड़े हुए मीन वाइल्ड लाइफ केम टू अ स्टैंड स्टिल इन पाकिस्तान बिगेस्ट सिटी कराची Parts of which were also flooded were completely inundated as the calamity once again exposed the government claims regarding its drain emergency plans. Local media reported at least five people also lost their lives in the port city due to rain related incidents in the past 24 hours. And moving on, Indian authorities resumed pilgrimage to the Hindu cave shrine of Amarnath in Jammu and Kashmir territory on Monday, which was temporarily halted after at least 16 people died as a cloudburst hit the region last Friday. During the annual pilgrimage, tens of thousands of Hindus cross glaciers and waterlogged trails to reach the cave shrine, which contains an ice stalagmite considered to be a physical manifestation of Lord Shiva. The cave is covered in snow for most of the year, but authorities let pilgrims visit for 45 days over the summers. The recent incident of natural calamity has failed to deter their spirits, devotees said. This year's pilgrimage, which began on June 30th, is taking place after a gap of two years due to COVID-19. अभी साढ़े ग्यारह बजे तक जो मुझे सूचना थी लगभग सात हजार के आसपास लोग चल पड़े थे यात्रा के लिए फिर थोड़ी बारिश होने की वजह से थोड़े टाइम के लिए रोका गया था यात्रा लेकिन बहुत उत्साह से लोग यात्रा के लिए आगे बढ़ चुके हैं बालटाल वाले रूट से भी यात्रा शुरू नहीं हुई जैसा कि मुझे सूचना मिली है उस रूट को सिर्फ बाहर जाने के लिए मतलब जो लोग दर्शन करके निकलेंगे उसके लिए आज के लिए इस्तेमाल किया जाएगा And in news from Sri Lanka, leaders of the Sri Lankan protest movement on Monday said crowds would keep occupying the residences of the President and the Prime Minister in Colombo until they finally quit the office. Prime Minister Ranil Vikramasinghe and Cabinet Ministers have said they would resign after an all-party government is formed. Hundreds of Sri Lankans continue to throng the President's Secretariat and residence in capital Colombo on Monday waiting for the cabinet to resign and make way for a new government after a tumultuous weekend which saw thousands of protesters storming the official residences of the Prime Minister and President. People strolled and toured the colonial era buildings with armed soldiers and police making no attempt to stop anyone. 
Leaders of the protest movement have said crowds would keep occupying the residences until they finally quit office over the worst financial crisis the country has faced in 70 years. Parliament we have to keep the government in the middle of the view of the government. अभी क्या नहीं नेवता अभी तो मैं पार्लिमेंट इन पक्ष हरी ए नियोजित अन्न हरी अपने नियोजित अन्न भी निशा में सर्रों पा एक और लोग ऐसे लोग करना कुमांत्रों लिंग है तो ना आंडू का टापिए का गन्हा है अभी निश्चित हो मारा गला भूमि योजना वाक कर लेती है ना अंतर कालीन पाल ने प्राइम मिनिस्टर रनिल विक्रम and added he was ready to form a new government. The crisis hit nation barely has any dollars left to import fuel, which has been severely rationed to essential services such as buses and trains. And long lines continued outside petrol station for their futile wait. In news from Pakistan, Pakistan's Interior Minister Rana Sanaul on Sunday said that the International Monetary Fund has not released the tranche for the six billion U.S. dollars bailout package, even though it has made the country dance to its tune. He blamed that the situation would have not been such worse if correct decisions had been made by the previous government. Pakistan's Interior Minister Rana Sanaullah on Sunday said that the IMF, International Monetary Fund, is twisting the government round its little finger and has not resumed the six billion US dollars loan program, even though it has made the country dance to its tune. While addressing a press conference, the minister blamed ousted Premier Imran Khan's previous PTI government pushed the country into a ditch due to its faulty policies, which have led to the dire economic situation. He said the incumbent government is forced to even accept terms which it is not in favour of, indirectly pointing to removal of fuel subsidies and subsequent price hike which have led to a public outrage. The South Asian nation of 220 million has been facing economic turmoil with fast dwindling foreign reserves and a record depreciation of its currency. The inflation rate hit a 13-year high of 21.3% in June. Pakistan entered the 39-month IMF program in 2019, but less than half of the amount has been dispersed so far, as the country has struggled to meet agreed targets. Well, moving on, a massive protest was recently held by the locals in Pakistan-administered Kashmir to express anger over frequent load shedding and demanded 400 megawatts of electricity for free. They said despite having mega dams and hydropower projects in the region, they have to face hours of load shedding. Scores of locals recently held a massive protest and blocked roads in Pakistan administered Kashmir against frequent load shedding in the illegally occupied region and demanded 400 megawatts of electricity for free. The protesters expressed they are having a distressing time due to the prolonged power cuts expanding to more than 16 hours. They said despite having mega dams and hydropower projects like Neelam Jhelam hydropower plant in the region, they have to face such a situation. They lamented that electricity can be supplied to them by installing small turbines, but unfortunately, the Pakistan government is not paying any attention to it. गवर्नमेंट जो कि जो अभी तक गवर्नमेंट का कोई भी नुमाइंदा यहां पर है लोगों को सुनने के लिए नहीं आया कि लोग क्यों इस रोड पर आए हुए हैं और चूंकि जो जो इशू है इस वक्त बिजली के हवाले से तकरीबन 12 घंटे या 14 घंटे की मुसलसल लोड शेडिंग होती है होती है जिसकी वजह से लोग इतने परेशान हैं इतने परेशान हैं गर्मी है ऊपर से इतनी गर्मी है कि और रात को बिजली नहीं होती है सारे लोग इस इस लोड शेडिंग को लेकर बहुत परेशान हैं Locals in Pakistan administered Kashmir accuse that Islamabad has continued to maintain an oppressive attitude and has so far ignored even their basic demands. They blame Pakistan assured them of developments and job opportunities, but it has only given them hours of load shedding, lack of drinking water, along with turning the roaring rivers into small rivulets or drains. And a baby goat with astonishingly long ears has become a media star in Pakistan since its birth last month. Named Simba, the git goat is living a pampered existence in Karachi city with its owner claiming a world record that may or may not exist. Have a look. Some social media stars win their fame through their looks, other through their jokes. Simba. 
a baby goat in Pakistan has won over the web with its astonishingly long ears that are 22 inches long. The tawny coated kid goat has attracted thousands of followers on YouTube and other channels since it was born in Karachi city on June 4th. Simba's ears were 19 inches long when it was born. They have grown another 3 inches in just over a month and are showing no signs of stopping. Simba's breeder, Muhammad Hassan Nareju, has also sent Simba's details to the Guinea's Book of Records and is awaiting an answer. Now it's 34 days, so it's given 95 interviews to the international media as well as local media of Pakistan. And on every news channel, it's got headlines, on every newspaper, it's got headlines, front page, it's got pictures, posts. So I understand that if there is a sportsman, a politician, a forces, a extraordinary actor, a anchor, a celebrity, it's got so much fame in such a time, it's got so much fame in such a time, it's got so much fame in such a time, it's got so much fame in such a time. Nareju works in the air traffic control department of Karachi airport, but his passion is goat breeding. He said he now plans to preserve Simba's semen for artificial insemination. Nareju has also got a special velvet harness or pouch to keep the baby goat's ears so it can run and play with ease. He feeds Simba meals three times a day and has taken other steps to ensure animals' well-being, including a black thread around its neck, a local belief that it wards off the evil eye. And millions of Muslims across India, Pakistan and Nepal celebrated Eid al-Adha with fervor on Sunday as people across South Asia have cast aside COVID fears as the pandemic situation has finally improved. Eid al-Adha commemorates the tale of Prophet Ibrahim's willingness to sacrifice his son as an act of obedience to the God. Muslims in India marked Eid al-Adha festival on Sunday by taking part in mass prayers, family get-togethers and sharing of wishes after two years of scaled-down festivities due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Eid al-Adha, one of Islam's two main festivals, marks the climax of the annual Hajj pilgrimage when Muslims slaughter goats and other livestock to commemorate the willingness of Ibrahim to sacrifice his son on God's command, often distributing meat to the poor. آج کا دن عید کا دن دعا کا ہوتا ہے اللہ سے مانگنے کا دن ہوتا ہے تو ہم اللہ تعالیٰ سے دعا کرتے ہیں کہ ہمارے لئے بھی اس کی رحمتیں ہوں اور پورے دیش کے لئے ہوں پورے دیش میں آج کل جو ماحول چل رہا ہے نفرت کا ماحول ہے یہ بھی ختم ہو جائے پیار کا ماحول آ جائے Similar scenes were witnessed in neighboring Nepal, where hundreds of Muslims thronged the Kashmiri mosque in capital Kathmandu on Sunday morning for the mass prayer ceremony. After the completion of the recitation of the prayers, devotees exchanged greetings by hugging and wishing one another on the occasion. Farak pound sa, kine ki ami kothi borsa gap gareyo yo Eid, Eid Bakrid, dui borsa gap gareyo, dui borsa pachi tisro borsa ma amle Bakrid. पागो त्यो हिसाब में एकदम रामरो था के यो। Meanwhile, Pakistani Muslims also performed Eid al-Adha prayers and slaughtered livestock to mark the festival. Following the slaughtering ceremony, the meat is traditionally distributed to the needy, and the remainder is for the family and friends. Well, that's the way it was in South Asia this evening. Before we conclude, the top stories once again. Monsoon rains wreck havoc in India and Pakistan, thousands affected. Sri Lankan protesters throng President's house await for leaders' resignations. And no loan from IMF despite Pakistan dancing to its tune, says Interior Minister. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.